Hello everyone, Shamancini here, and today is the first video on uh, my new series on Debian training. So pretty much what we're going to be covering in this uh, in this series is how to install and configure a Debian server from scratch. Um, most of my videos, if you've been following me, have been where um, Debian is already installed and we're installing a specific tool or something like that. But this is to help cover the, the beginners who want to begin using Linux. And I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible so you get um, used to how how to navigate the Linux operating system from a command line aspect and then once in a while we'll dip into the GUI. Um, this will cover the Debian server. Um, I will if um, I will as soon as I get some time start on uh, using the desktop operating system which I will install uh, the desktop operating system I will use is uh, Ubuntu for the desktop but for me it's a personal preference I like Debian because pretty much with this operating system you start from the ground up uh, whereas with Ubuntu or some other software uh, other distributions um, in my opinion this is uh, they come with a lot of pre-configured packages and stuff like that where it makes the operating system much more heavy um, so you'll learn some of the differences as we go along and uh, I hope that this video I hope that the series definitely helps someone um, grasp the concept and uh, start using Linux um, as a server operating system uh, and uh, so let's begin so Debian is located you can download at Debian.org uh, this is the website and um, Debian's known as the universal operating system okay Debian uh, can run on almost anything uh, as if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi the main operating system the one of the first operating systems was Debian it was just called Raspbian um, and uh, stuff like that Debian's once configured secure uh, once configured properly is very secure um, very lightweight and um, once you get the concept very simple to use current the current version of Debian is 8.1 so um, to download the operating system you just click uh, download 8.1 now I'm going to show you a different way because I want to explain the different types of uh, downloads you can do so if you click on um, obtain a copy okay this is the different types of downloads you can do so now they have small what, what are known as small installation images now the small installation images um, are pretty much their basic install maybe about a couple hundred megabytes and um, what what happens is it's just enough for you to boot and get your network up and running and then based on what you want the server to do or if you just want a basic server it'll go ahead and download the required packages um, for that server the best part about the network install is that you're going to get all the brand new packages at their current um, at their current version so imagine with windows for instance you install windows windows depending on how old your cd is is completely out of date so now you got to go back and download all the updates for windows but wouldn't it be great if you can do that at the install um, which almost all Linux distributions you can do the this is not the only operating system uh, sorry Debian is not the only operating system that allows you to do that so to download the um, network install you n need to know your servers architecture or your PC's architecture so i386 is for 32-bit computers AMD 64 is for 64-bit um, CPUs ARM as you can imagine is for ARM CPUs ARM HF is uh, for 32-bit PPC is for power PC okay uh, so power PC is like your old Macintoshes stuff like that okay so uh, you go ahead and download the install I normally just do the complete installation image um, that way 
see uh, another downfall is this is great like the network install is great in a um you know once you're like in a home lab or a small office with you know very few servers but if you're spinning up like 50 servers a week or let's say 50 servers a day uh in one day i should say not 50 servers a day but 50 servers in one day you can imagine how much bandwidth you're going to tax your network by downloading all that all that new updates so sometimes it's better just to do it on a per server basis it's all really up to you so I already have the ins I already have the CD downloaded. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, we're going to dive in on the install. Now I'm going to use VirtualBox uh, here so we can illustrate the install process. Okay, let me just. Oh, sorry. This is the extracted thing. Okay, so I have Debian 8.1, the CD here, and we'll begin the install. Okay, so you can use either a text-based install or a graphical install. Um, I use a text-based install, which is just under install, or uh, usually, so we'll just go with with that. Select English. Okay, so the install loads some prerequisite components, stuff that it needs for the install. Okay, so now, um, at this point it obtains an IP by DHCP at this point if you want you if you want to specify uh, an IP you can hit cancel at that point and then go configure network manually okay and then you know put in your IP Now we set up the Ethernet link. I will have to make a tweak. Okay. So now you can input your host name. So let's just put Debian Lab. Oh, sorry. Um, so you can put Debian Lab or you know whichever one you want. Um, and now you can put a domain name. So let's just say Mancini.com. You don't have to put one in, but um, you can if you want. Now you put in your password, your root password. And now this is where you can create a user, your first user that's not root. Okay, select your time zone, Eastern time for me. Okay, now this is where you can do your partitioning. Now for me, I'm just going to use the entire disk because this is a virtual machine. Um, this is where you'll have to um, do basically your uh, partitioning. So you can either use, uh, you know, guided uh, use entire disk. You can use use entire disk and the LVM, which is a logical uh, volume manager. And um, you can also do encrypted logical volume manager. And then, of course, manual. Okay. And then this is where you can select um, what devices, sorry, what, what hard drive you want to use. Okay. Um, 
I would suggest uh, while for partitioning that you have that uh, decided ahead of time and then it's actually better to use a graphical installer at that point because there's much more of a prettier I guess uh, partitioning almost like a partition magic um, GUI that helps you out rather than having to remember all of this so now we hit the guided use entire disk because that's what I want and now you can say here um, we can separate the so pretty much there'll be different partitions in Linux unlike Windows where you have kind of like one partition and your operating systems all in that partition and stuff like that um, in Linux you can have specific partitions bit for certain things like for instance I can uh, do my own my all the files that are in my home directory can be on a specific partition all my logs can be on another partition all my temporary files are another partition uh, stuff like that so um, you can do that or you can do just all in one partition which I just done I'll just say yes and then we'll commit the changes We're just waiting for the install to finish. So I think I'm just going to wait for this to finish and then uh, I'll get right, I'll unpause the video. Okay, so now we're back. Um, the installation is asking us here, do we want uh, the DVD to be scanned? So we're going to say no to this. Okay, and then you click yes, or sorry, you hit yes for use a network mirror. And now you can select the the country that's closest to you or your country um, and get a server from them so I'm in Canada and then uh, I'm going to use let's say debian.yorkuniversity.ca okay click uh, I don't use a proxy so I don't need a proxy okay so it seems that that server is not working so we'll try a new one here Okay, so I had to select a uh, new mirror. Okay. Just give this a moment or so. And now, um, in a moment, it'll ask you what role you want the server to be set to. So we'll just wait for that. Okay, uh, it'll ask you, do you want to pretty much uh, uh, submit installed data? I usually say no, you can say yes. The install data will go to Debian to help them out. Okay, so this is the part we're saying. So now it asks you, do you want to install a desktop environment? I normally say no to save system resources. This is not going to be a print server. Um, you will have to say yes for SSH because you want to be able to log in to the server. And so like I said with Debian, um, the 
there's nothing installed on the base system. So like even SSH is not installed. You have to install it to be able to remotely access your server. So, and then the standard system utilities, I believe that's things like ping and stuff like that. So yeah, we do want that. Click continue and now the rest of the install will finish. Okay, and I'll pause the video while it's finishing. Okay, so now we're at the part where uh, in the installation, it'll ask you about the Grub bootloader. Now, Grub is, uh, as it says, it's a bootloader that uh, installs on your Linux system. Now, if this is the only operating system on your computer, so say that you're not dual booting or anything like that, you do not need Grub. Um, I always just install it anyways because if you do ever want to dual boot or anything like that you can and you don't have to worry about installing it and it's a very small app it doesn't really take up any system resources or anything like that okay so now the installation is complete we'll hit continue and we'll wait for the server to boot up okay so this is what you'll see when the server is booting up and voila we are in business the install has been complete we'll do a we'll do a quick check here just log in okay, we can log in we got network and now that our server has been installed so watch for the next video when we start configuring um the our server and uh, start navigating around it i hope this video helped you and learning how to install debian if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below you can also visit my website shamancini.com thank you for watching